Thanks, thanks very much, uh, Robert and Clarissa. And I, I think we should uh, see whether there are particular questions for uh, Clarissa and Robert on their intervention. So from Clarissa, we had her wish list and re-engineering of the, of the global monitoring landscape. And from, from Robert, we've, we've had some insight into the process for the post-2015 goals, targets, and indicators. Any, any burning questions or points uh, for clarification? I see one from Ned. This side of the, of the room is doing really well, so I'm going to sort of name and shame this, this side of the room that really needs to come up with, with questions. But we've got one from Ned. Ah, oh, excellent. Someone's taken the bait. And one, uh, one other from here. And then we'll move on to the next section and the last section of this session. So Ned, first, first for you. Mine's more of a, of a comment, just, and it's a quick one. Um, I think that any discussions on kind of future monitoring have got to step a little bit out of our world and look at at least two big trends that are happening that could influence and help us enormously. So one is um, there's been enormous movement around things like sensors uh, that are able to track uh, water quality, water quantity, use, functionality, downtime and all that. And even though we're at the beginning of this, we've seen it spread across Europe and North America quite dramatically. And I imagine it will go um, south just as dramatically over time. We're testing, uh, we've, we've put a monitor now on an Afrodev hand pump, um, which is good. I know some uh, university students in the UK have done that as well. Um, so that's coming and that's real potential power. The second is, is that um, I think the kind of monitoring bureaucracy is, is being pushed by uh, the expansion of cell phones, the expansion of apps that allow people to comment on their own development. Um, you've seen that in uh, all the kind of crowd mapping work that has always been around crisis. Um, Haiti, what's going on in Egypt, what's going on in Syria. But what's the most interesting move is it's actually shifting quite dramatically into development. Mm -hmm. And it's basically saying that people on the ground are actually the best monitors of their uh, existence. They are the best people to comment on this. There's a lot of groups um, working particularly with SMS that are talking about, you know, my water point is down, um, what's going on, monitoring responses. And I think if we harness that, a lot of the, a lot of the stuff becomes uh, much more rich, mm -hmm. much more powerful, and will position us well in the future. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, great comments. Uh, sort of innovation uh, driving uh, different types of monitoring and pushing the the bureaucracy. Thanks for that comment. And a question here, could you introduce yourself, please? Thank you. Sue Yardley from Tear Fund in the UK. This is for Clarissa. It's a very useful um, presentation. And you may not be able to answer this at this stage, but I just wondered what you felt the appetite is for consolidating and coordinating the monitoring um, processes because you said everyone's quite wedded, um, it's been designed for specific purposes. And any initial thoughts on financial and um, organizational implement sort of um, a kind of impact from it? Because I imagine it for some that might be huge in terms of ensuring the timings of all of those marry up better. Does any of you have got any initial thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, I, I have some initial thoughts on that. Appetite, none. You know, the appetite is for creating new monitoring initiatives. <laughs> Let's all be, you know, frank with each other. Uh, and I think that what happens, and I think this is a sort of, you know, part of human nature, is that if you see a problem with monitoring, you dream up a new monitoring initiative to try to solve it. And, you know, I, it's great that there's a lot of sort of innovation and innovative thinking coming into, into the, the sector. Um, but it's going to be much harder work to try to sort of pull everything all together than to dream up, um, you know, Water, water pump sensors are great, um, but then I'm sure Ned would be the first one to say, how do you make a water point sensor actually change the way a government does its planning? So, and at, least, you know, at least you're thinking about that. Um, I think the financial implications are also huge because I think it's, a, it's a, a big dilemma in our sector how much we want to spend on monitoring because every penny we spend on monitoring is money taken away from implementation. We know we're dealing with a limited resource base for our sector. And even though we know that better monitoring will lead to better planning, will lead to our being able to tell a better story to the, 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 the governments, um, both uh, national governments in developing countries and donor governments who fund the sector, 
Um, we don't want to be branded as a, as a sector that just spends all of its time with, it, with the head in the clouds doing, doing monitoring. But obviously the way that we would make this monitoring better would be to do more of it. We'd, we'd have more frequent um, uh, household surveys and we'd have a more frequent uh, glass and that type of thing. So I think we've got to be able to articulate to the development community how we have arrived at, at that, that balance. And it's something that we then need to think about very carefully. Great, thank you very much. Peregrine, I see oh, a couple of questions. Let's, I, let's roll with the, the questions. I'm hoping that they might build on, on, on that response. So Peregrine, and then uh, over here in the middle. Oh, right, sorry. It's a comment rather than a question. Um, there was reports out from the OECD some years ago about the number of uh, missions that um, governments, I think Vietnam was one particular government that was looked at that they had to uh, host, you know, I think it was something like 300 donor missions. Um, and so to me, the, it's very important that with all this monitoring, which is getting better and better, that it, the results are actually used. The big gain is if donors use things like the CSO reports. Now, a question for Dominic, really. Does, do the CASs use your CSO reports um, when they uh, do their strategies? And if they don't, then we are rather wasting our time. So I, I think there's huge potential gains from this better monitoring, but they're only they're potential gains, and they'll only be realized if the data is, is used by, by all the various donors uh, that work in these countries. OK, and then, so maybe, maybe we take the question in the center, and then, Dominic, I don't know whether you wanted to respond on that. I have a comment and a, a quick comment and a, a very short question. The comment I have is, and I think it was already outlined by Heather, that uh, one focus of NPRI could and should be uh, knowledge management or knowledge base, uh, knowledge management and learning. Um, and I think good practice examples for monitoring evaluation are around in the world. Uh, I have worked a couple of years in Zambia with a sector monitor. Uh, monitoring or establishing a sector monitoring system with a national regulator and I think it's a good uh, example also how you can link um, institutional capacity development, successful institutional capacity development with uh, reliable data on sector improvements and access to water and sanitation. Um, just one example and I, and I know there are many more out there in Kenya is working as well pretty well. Um, and the question I have uh, rightly said, there is a need for overcoming the institutional ego, as you said very nicely. <laughs> How do we do this? Is there any thinking, any, um, any initiative taken already, or is it just on the PowerPoint slide so far? Clarissa. <laughs> It's, it's just on the PowerPoint slide, <laughs> is the answer. Uh, I, I think that um, this is why in this session we wanted to raise this idea that um, this could be uh, one of the strengths that a partnership like Sanitation Water for All would bring to the sector, would be to, to take the um, idea of a, of a shared um, global monitoring framework past, um, past the idea of just a, a sort of a, a concept and into reality. And Dominic, did you, did you have any response for Peregrine's uh, comment? Uh, sure. I mean, the, the, it, the direct response is in, in some countries, yes, in other countries, no. And, and the indirect response, and really then, then trying to rise above the institutional and personal egos, is, is, to, is to say um, what we want to do is strengthen country monitoring. And so perhaps... I mean, if, if, if we can rally around that, and perhaps that, will be, that was the one thing that I thought in uh, Clarissa's slide we should, um, that was one area we could take out, is just to have country, so, so strengthening sector, country sector M&E and global. And then and maybe some regional analysis as well, but I mean, the, the going straight from the country level sector and nothing in between, just sec country to global. <laughs> Uh, then the question there, and the question that we grappled with a lot with the, with the country status overviews and in many iterations um, thereof in other countries, is to what extent does that need to be independent? Because that, that's the strength of the joint monitoring program 
um, is, is that it's done, the, the data is collected in a pretty much similar way in, across so many countries. Whereas if you, so if you allow the Zambian system, the Kenyan system, the Ugandan system to all go off and, and evolve in their own ways, you won't be able to compare anything. So that's the tension. And how do we, how do we not lose that? Okay. Um, again, with the same, uh, same comment that I made with regards to the MPRI, the, the work on monitoring that SWA is, is pushing here is, uh, is a work in progress. And as uh, Clarissa had said, you know, the, the shuffling of institutional egos is, is something that um, is currently uh, on the wish list. Um, but it's something that we are dedicated to working on. And there will be a partnership meeting for, for SWA later in the year in November in, in Johannesburg. And this, this issue will be on the table during that meeting. I'm going to sort of close that, that part of our session and sort of move us towards... Uh, you know, my impeccable timekeeping, uh, which you can see uh, on the screen. So, you, you know, you'll, you'll be pleased to know we've already done the breakout groups uh, and, and we've reported back. Um, so, uh, you know, my, my work here is done. Um, unfortunately, I didn't keep time very well, um, but we've got about half an hour left. My suggestion to you is that we still continue to do those buzz groups. Um, and we limit that to about 15 minutes. There's one or two questions that I'll put up on the, on the screen in a moment. And then I'll go around sort of interview style and, and get some reflections from the groups. So we're going to try and do this in a, in a sort of rapid fire fashion. Uh, so I hope you're all going to work with me on that. What, what it does mean for the next half hour is that those people at the back of the room who are sitting, sitting like they're at the back of the class, sniggering to each other, are going to have to move on to a table. So I'm going to encourage uh, those colleagues to, to go and meet someone new and, uh, and make a connection and join the other tables. That's the first thing. So we're, we're going to have to talk to each other now. The second thing is that we're going to try to organize, organize our, ourselves in the following way. You, you will have noticed that there are um, three rows of tables in this room. Okay, there's a row here that Peregrine is, is on. Uh, it starts over at that side and finishes here with Dominique. That's one row. There's a row in the middle where Ned and Clarissa are going across. And there's a row at the back with Therese sitting on the far edge and our colleagues over there on, on the left. So they're the three rows that we're going to use for this, for this themed uh, buzz group discussion. Okay? So what I'm going to do is... Uh, Hold on. Just bring up. Uh, just bring up some questions. So. Ah, there we go. So, these are some questions that uh, we would like your reflections on in those buzz groups. Okay. One of the things I mentioned at the start of the presentation is that we wanted to do three things. Reflect on uh, the HLM and the political prioritization topic, to consult with you around some of the things that SWA is doing, like MPRI and the monitoring uh, framework, and thirdly, to get some recommendations. So one of the things that the partnership is, is holding later in the year is a partnership meeting. And some of these questions are going to start to be built into, into that, the backgrounders for, for that, that, uh, that meeting. So you can see we've got three, three broad sections which align with what we've been talking about today. So monitoring, uh, country level uh, uh, processes, and the HLM group, which is our proxy for the political prioritization. And what we'd like you to do in your, on your tables is to pick a question or a couple of questions from one of those groups. And I'll tell you which row is going to be which group in a moment. But pick a question and talk about it. Try to come up with something that you think would be new or important or strategic for SWA to be working on. You can see what the questions are. They're ones which have been paraphrased during the course of this session. But I'm going to leave it up to you to decide on your table which of those questions you want to deal with. I'm, there's a little bit of a confused look out there, but, I'm, but you're all mature guys and girls, and I'm sure that you can, you can get through it. So here's the thing. I'm going to suggest in a rather top-down Attila the Hun fashion, which row is which group. 
Okay? And you can then either vote with your feet that you either stay on your table or you join colleagues in another group. Okay? So this first row I'm going to suggest is monitoring. Okay? If you're in any of these three tables here, you pick and choose one of those monitoring questions. The middle row is going to be country level processes and we may need more people to join that middle row because it's, it's a little bit, little bit small at the moment. And then the last row at the back is the high-level meeting group, okay? So you're going to be dealing with that high-level meeting. Wow, these guys are really keen. They're, they're already starting over there. It's, it's, they're on their way. So within your table, choose one or more questions. Decide who's going to be your, your rapporteur, so to speak. And we'll take 15 minutes on this. It's not a big activity. We just want initial thoughts, reactions, recommendations, against those questions. And if you don't like the row that you're sitting in, go and join a different row. And then I'll come back to you in about 15 minutes time. Okay? I'm hoping that's okay. Thank you. <laughs>